Okay. So, uh, guys, uh, we have covered quite a few topics already as part of our Selenium. So, we started with uh, the basics of Selenium architecture. You know, we saw, I mean, like we theoretically understood what how Selenium originated from Selenium IDE, uh, then Selenium RC, then Web Driver, then Selenium Grid, right? And now uh, we have started, you know, uh, understanding what is Selenium Web Driver and how we use it for automation. So, if you all can recollect, we started with, you know, how to create a driver, instance of a dro uh, driver, a web driver, uh, launch a browser, then, you know, what are the different browser commands that we can use, different navigation commands. And then we dived into uh, web elements. So, web element, you know, as we discussed, you know, uh, Selenium recognizes each of the uh, object on a web page as a web element. And... Uh, you know, based on the web element, there are different methods that we can uh, utilize. So for input box, we have seen send keys. For button, image, link, we have seen click, right? For checkbox and radio button also, we can uh, use uh, click. Um, but then, uh, you know, we have uh, some other methods also that we can use, like is selected and things like that. Then we saw drop down, you know, like select class we have to create. There are multiple drop down these days. You know, it is no longer the normal old style drop down. But there are dynamic drop downs that are there on web pages these days. So we saw how to uh, handle those. Web table also is very important. So we saw how to uh, iterate through each row, each column, and then each cell of a particular web table. Then we saw alerts, different types of web alerts that come, and how we can handle those. Uh, frames, uh, especially iframes, how to navigate to different iframes, how to come back from an iframe to a parent browser. Then uh, we also saw multiple windows, right? So if you click on a particular button and if a new window comes up or a new tab comes up, how do we navigate through each of those windows? And then again, come back to the parent window if required. And finally, we also saw uh, what is an action class. So uh, using action class, uh, we could simulate uh, you know uh, mouse and uh, uh, keyboard events so we saw how to um, an action class is also required where we have to do some complex operations so general click uh, and you know enter uh, value in the uh, text box can be done using these objects but if there is something like, you know, you have to right click or you have to drag and drop or you have to scroll down or scroll horizontal, then in that case, action class comes useful, uh, handy. And we saw, you know, the different operations that we can perform using action class. Uh, Robo, class uh, Robo class is also used to simulate mouse and keyboard operations. So then you might wonder why do we need Robo class if we already have action class, which does the same thing. But Robo class is actually more specific for, uh, you know, interacting with window based pop up. Okay, so we will discuss that. Uh, I mean, that is something that I'm planning to cover in the end because I want to first complete this uh, a little bigger topic of weight and uh, an important topic. But just to give you a heads up. So Robo class is basically used for handling uh, or interacting with window based pop up. So for example, um, uh, if you click on a particular button, Okay, and uh, you get an option of uh, a window pop up saying that you know save the file okay save as somewhere so uh, you cannot inspect that particular um, window uh, alert or pop up right so for that we use uh, uh, this robo class and we simulate uh, you know keyboard events like tab enter uh, caps lock or whatever so we will see that in detail so now we will start with weight uh, you know the concept of weight in uh, selenium so till now you you know we have used thread dot sleep right so it forcibly waits or pauses the execution of selenium for whatever amount of time we have mentioned in the thread dot sleep method right uh, if you recollect we have used uh, thread dot sleep you know quite often so this is one of the scenario right thread dot sleep 3000 so it is actually milliseconds. So basically it will wait for three seconds uh, at this particular point. Okay. But then I told you this is not the optimum way of uh, using wait because this is a hard coded wait time and irrespective of whether, you know, the 
object that we are trying to find if it is available still it will anyways wait for three seconds okay so uh, ideally in real time scenario we don't use uh, these kind of weights okay so then uh, what is the other option of uh, you know using this weight so uh, we have something called as uh, uh, implicit weight and we have also called something uh, uh, something called as uh, explicit weight also okay so we will see each of these two things first uh, um, uh, you know theoretically what it means and then we will see it with an example also okay so implicit weight is actually you know we make the selenium weight uh, but without a condition so it is like you know you can say a condition less weight okay and uh, we would wait uh, make that particular object uh, selenium weight uh, for you know uh, using two methods you know implicitly weight and page load timeout so uh, just to you know make you understand implicit weight is a condition less weight uh, that we use and explicit weight you know it is uh, a weight with certain conditions so we will see you know a few of the conditions uh, that we can use in our day to day scenario and we will see some of them but there are plenty of conditions in explicit weight okay so we will see that so let's start with implicit weight which is a condition less weight as i said uh, i will open one class okay so let me say day 4 weight okay public static void main to save time i will just copy paste this thing okay so basically we are we have created a chrome browser uh instance and now we are going to launch a particular website okay <clears throat> so let's say okay let me show you what is implicit weight first implicit implicitly weight okay so we will see this so what what the syntax here is we have to use driver dot manage okay and if you see here there is a method called as timeouts okay so timeouts is basically used with an implicitly wait a method and you have to give a certain duration for it okay so let's say uh, i give here duration dot so if you see duration dot it will give you again a host of different options that you can use with this so you can make uh, that particular uh, you know selenium wait for few days few hours few milliseconds minutes or whatever so we can make use of seconds in this case okay and i give the seconds as 5 5 seconds wait okay and then what i'll do is i would say driver dot navigate dot two okay and let's say i give the path of amazon okay https www dot amazon dot in okay so it will basically launch amazon right let me launch this also manually so that we can perform certain operations on this what i'll do is probably i will uh, enter some value over here let's say rest watch for men okay so if i want to enter some value and then i want to click on this magnifying glass or the search icon okay so let me inspect this first okay inspect this is the id of that particular edit box Rahul, your screen is not visible. Really? Yeah. All this why? No, no, we will for us. It's visible for us. Okay. Uh, fine. Uh, who, who is not able to see? Actually, is it Madhuri? Ah, yes. Yeah, yes, Rahul. 
ओके लेट मी स्टॉप एंड ट्राई टू री शेयर ओके आई होप दैट वर्क्स Okay, Madhuri, is it visible now? Ah, yes, Rahul. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, what I was doing here. Huh. So uh, I have to enter some value in this Amazon edit box. Okay, so this is the ID, which I think should be unique. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So it is unique, right? Uh, let me. Say. Rahul, once I will rejoin Rahul. Uh, sure. No problem. Yeah. Anyways, this recording is there. In case you miss out anything, you will. Get uh, why? Because I'm unable to visible your screen. I will rejoin once again. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So I am using CSS selector. Okay. By the way, I just uh, I just realized that probably I have to cover this. Uh, uh selector related topic also so maybe i will cover that tomorrow you know in 15 20 minutes i will cover that but anyways uh, what i've done here is uh, i've used this uh, id attribute okay and using css selector so css selector basically uh, you can uh, you know identify an object using css selector if it is id you have to mention it as hash and you have to mention the value okay so it will help you identify that object if it is um, select uh, css using this uh, syntax okay and uh, if it is class so in that case uh, what css does is uh, you have to use instead of hash you have to use a dot okay so something like that but we will see those uh, selector related uh, topic tomorrow but for now i have used this dot css selector okay and what i'll do is i would uh, use the send keys method and i would say res watch for nil okay and then i will also press that uh, search icon right so let me identify that so this is id again using css i would be able to find this uh by dot css selector now would say in this case click okay so now and then i would also print this out i would say implicit Waited. So what this is going to do is that when I mention this particular line, driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait, and I have mentioned the duration of how long it should wait for uh, to uh, for identifying an DOM object. Okay, so let's say for whatever things that I write after this. If for any reason, if Selenium is not able to uh, identify an object, it will wait for this many seconds. Okay, so whether it is this edit box or this button, it will wait for five seconds min, uh, you know, uh, maximum uh, before it throws an error like no such element uh, exception or whatever. Okay, so this particular. method implicitly wait will make a uh, selenium wait for those many duration if it is not able to identify or you know find an object or or an element and let's say for example it identifies this uh, element within 1 second so then obviously it will proceed with the second second uh, with the next line okay so it will not wait for 5 seconds always only if it is not able to identify an element it will wait maximum for 5 seconds right so rather than we 
hard coding something like this thread dot sleep and 5000 milliseconds in this case what will happen whether it finds an object or not you know it will wait for five seconds you know uh, forcibly okay so it, that is why use instead of using this thread dot sleep what i would do is i would use this implicitly wait method i will mention five seconds here so uh, throughout this driver in, in throughout this you know instance of this driver any object that is not able to get identified within five seconds you know uh, uh, selenium will wait for that the moment it crosses five seconds and if it is still not able to identify the object it will throw an error whatever no such element exception or you know whatever error it is supposed to throw okay so this is what this implicitly wait would do let me execute this and let's see if it works okay so So it has done its job, wrist watch for men has been entered and it has clicked on the search icon, right? So now if you see it happened, you know, probably in two seconds or three seconds, right? So it did not wait for each line for five seconds if I had mentioned something like thread dot sleep, right? So if it, let's say for this button, if this button doesn't get identified within five seconds, then it would have waited for five seconds before it throws an exception uh, are you getting my point guys uh, any question on this uh, i hope i'm able to you know uh, you know uh, you know help you understand the difference between implicitly wait and thread dot sleep yeah right. uh -huh. okay so uh, this was about implicitly wait wherein you uh, you know define that implicit wait once uh, you know using this particular line and throughout this code until you know this driver dot quit that instant gets uh, completed you know this five seconds will be applicable throughout that uh, piece of code for whichever object you are trying to identify okay so this is what implicit wait does then there is another implicit wait uh, method that you can use or command that you can use uh, it is called as page load timeout okay so now you must have understood you know you must have got an idea what this must be doing with the name itself so what it will do is it will wait for the particular page to load for that many you know seconds okay so let's say uh, you know a particular website might take some long you know for the page to load maybe uh, I don't know IRCTC probably uh, I don't know so if it takes long for a particular web page to load then we can give some maximum threshold for it so that it can wait okay so let's say uh, without this page load timeout you know if I if I mention uh, you know launch IRCTC enter your username password click on submit right and let's say that for that particular instance the web page is taking some time for loading right probably it crosses uh, 20 seconds or 30 seconds right so selenium will not wait for that long i believe the default wait time if i'm correct i think it is 20 seconds uh, i'm not sure but something like that so whatever the default time uh, limit is there for selenium if it breaches that it will immediately throw an error and your execution will come to an halt okay but if you use page load timeout method using this implicit wait concept and if you know for a particular instance you know your application is you know uh, you know uh, is slow for a particular day you know what for whatever reason you can just increase this implicit wait time by instead of 20 seconds you can probably make it 60 seconds so if within the 60 seconds uh, you know if the page gets loaded you know nothing like it you know it would work perfectly fine but obviously you don't want selenium to wait for eternity right so you have to set some threshold for it so if it goes beyond 60 seconds which is obviously not an acceptable scenario for a page to you know load beyond 60 seconds then it, obviously it will throw an error and you know you, you have to use error handling to you know uh you know deal with that scenario 
okay so we will see now what is a page load timeout okay so let's continue so here again if i have to say driver dot manage dot timeouts okay dot page load timeout you see and here you mention duration okay one thing to remember here is you cannot directly put 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds over here okay because you have to specify what time unit you want to use okay it is not like thread dot sleep which by default takes milliseconds okay that is why you have to use this duration dot and then here you can mention whatever unit you want to use okay so if i mention here something like uh, what 30 seconds okay so that would indicate that for any page load method you know uh, driver dot navigate to or driver dot get okay it will wait maximum for 30 seconds because of this particular statement okay so now if i say here driver dot navigate dot to and let's take an example of ircTC itself because generally it you is, can take a flip flip card example Rahul. Okay. flip card look okay sure yeah sure. yeah yeah it uh, comes after five to ten seconds login okay but this time it took pretty fast okay anyways yeah in the government yeah. website yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 lic <laughs> india dot in this one Yeah, Rajesh, I think you are right. It is yeah. Okay, so I think this is a perfect example. Okay, so we will use LIC. Okay, LIC India. Okay, uh, and then I have to also interact with one object, right? So okay, so probably uh, yeah, I, I'll just take an example of clicking on this. Okay on this object just to see uh, <coughs> span contains text contains text this works fine right so I will take this object and I will say driver dot find okay element <coughs> by dot next path okay dot click okay so now this page if we uh -huh. do yeah but then uh, it was showing like a 0 of 0, right? So it means it won't work, right? 0 of 0? Uh, yes. No, 1 of 1. Right? So 1 of 1. Okay, maybe... Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see can if it works. Yeah. I mean, at least over here it is showing as 1 of 1. I don't know if it will click or not. I don't know if there is any iframe or anything. Let's figure that out later, okay? But uh, the intention here is to check if that particular uh, page gets loaded within 30 seconds then it should be able to click on this particular object if it doesn't get loaded before uh, you know before 30 seconds then obviously it will not be able to click on I mean it will not be able to find this object and it will throw an error right so first let's make this 10 seconds and in 10 seconds it should 
But Rahul, you use navigate to method here, so it's not wait na uh, to now entire page is loaded. Sorry. You use navigate to method na here, uh -huh. so it's, so it's not wait na entire page is loaded. It will not wait for the entire page to load. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. we have given this ten second period to wait na. Yeah, instead of gate, directly just go for the gate. Driver dot get. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. So you're saying navigate dot two will not work with this? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Let's see this then. Okay. It has clicked on it because for this time it uh, got loaded pretty fast. uh what i can do is just to show you that it doesn't work this is an i told you you can use flipkart and but flipkart also actually it, it loaded no. pretty fast yeah no 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 uh, actually rahul uh, i was i was not uh, saying about lic it's a nic national informatics center nic.government.in so whatever we have the indian government websites so those all are pretty slow nic n for nagpur okay. nic.goe.in all are pretty slow okay okay now since uh, Sanj i think sanjay is insisting for, for flipkart we will try that mm. okay no problem yeah but i thought even flipkart was pretty fast let's see so you see it just came within a second i think i think your network is very fast <laughs> Yeah, because this Flipkart will uh, load very fast. I'm sure. Let's try with this NIC in that case. What should I click here, uh, Rajesh? You're saying uh, anything. Okay. Or what I can do is, or what I can do is, let me put this as one second, and just to show you that it fails. Okay, we saw. the positive scenario if i put 10 seconds it was able to click right uh, so in 1 second probably it should fail right so let me see if this works just to show you the negative scenario and what else i can do is uh, probably i'll delete the cache probably because of cache it is loading fast uh, history clear browsing this is taking time to load okay anyways so we will see if the page loads in one second this licindia.com whether it is able to click on this or not okay so let me execute <coughs> execute this don't even launch the url what is the problem time out receiving message from renderer okay is it because i just mentioned one second here let's see yeah so i think if i mention some time which is obviously unrealistic you know i had given one right so it did not even it was not even able to launch that particular url and it gave an error saying that time out error right so if there if this is this was just to show you the negative uh, scenario of this particular page load but if you have to you know manage the page load time if it is you know taking some time then obviously you can increase the duration of that page load time out but whatever seconds you want 
and it will wait for that many period of time if the page has not loaded until then okay so now if i give something like let's say three seconds and if i have to execute and see if it works because i think it worked with three or five seconds let me see if it gives you an error for three seconds as well I think it has given an error this time. Yes. So timeout exception error. Timed out receiving message from renderer. So what happened is that this page licindia.com, this page, uh, whatever page you want to test, I mean, we are taking this example just for this, uh, you know, practice session. So this particular URL did not get loaded within three seconds. Then obviously it was not able to click on it. But before even giving an error for this no such element exception, since the page itself was not loaded within three seconds, it gave you a timeout exception that this particular page was not loaded uh, as per the time that you have set. Okay, so it has given you uh, org.openqa.selenium timeout exception error. Okay, so if you come across this error and if you if you think that the application is behaving slow for a particular day you can obviously increase the time of this wait page load timeout by whatever time you want and then if you execute the same script okay then it should work you know it will wait for whatever uh, time it takes so if you see now it has clicked on that buy policy online whatever that link was and it has you know successfully completed the execution why because now i have increased the timeout for that particular page load by 30 seconds earlier it was three seconds and obviously page didn't load within three seconds and it gave you an error on this particular line itself in this line you know timeout exception error right so this is how implicit weight for a web element using this implicitly weight method and page load timeout for you know the browser is handled using this implicit uh, uh, concept okay uh, any question so far for this uh, hello yeah Jansi oh the the meeting got Ended up. No, but uh, the okay. Anyways, yeah. Let's see.
Ngày 2 đâu Yeah, hi guys. Uh, I don't know why the meeting got ended and I was not even aware. So I was speaking for quite some time until Jansi called. Uh, I don't know what is the problem. Wasting time. Maybe Raul, you click on this uh, browser close button for this reason. Okay. Uh, anyways, yeah. So, uh, are you guys able to see my screen? No? Hello. Okay. So, I don't know when, uh, what was the last thing you guys heard. So, basically, uh, I was trying to show you where, uh, you know, when I mentioned this duration of seconds as 3. Okay, and obviously the page didn't get loaded within 3 seconds, right? So, it gave an error of uh, timeout exception. Okay, so let me show you again. Uh, you guys are there, right? Uh, you are able to see the screen and all, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. So yes. I, I will execute this now. And you see the page has not loaded within three seconds, right? The the um, loading had taken more than three seconds. And if you see the console now, it has given you a timeout exception error, right? So let's say for example, in real time scenario, if your particular project where you're working on the particular application for that particular day is taking unusually more time than normal, right? So then in that case, what you can do is you can simply use this page load timeout method and you can increase the duration of, you know, page load timeout wait over here. Like in this case, I made it from three to 30 seconds. And now if I execute, the same code you know the page is loading probably in five seconds and then it has clicked on that buy policy online link and it has you know done the execution right so this is how you add implicit weight for an object i mean the find element object you know to identify the object the dom object using this implicitly weight method and for a browser, for page load, you use this page load timeout method to make that script work fine, irrespective of, you know, whether it takes, you know, whatever time for an object to be identified or for the page to load during the time that you have mentioned. Okay. So this is a much better way than using thread.sleep. Because, you know, as I have told you, thread.sleep would hard-codedly make that Selenium execution pause uh, until it moves ahead. Okay, so any questions so far, guys? Okay, if not, I, I'm just curious to know whether this driver.navigate.2 will work with, uh, you know, this method. Because I think Sanjay or somebody said that it doesn't work, right? So I just wanted to check. So if I use this, if I say three seconds, first time it should fail. Right? Let me execute this. So it took more than three seconds and obviously it has given an error timeout exception and now if I put 30 let's see if it works yeah it worked here so Sanjay I mean uh, this navigate.2 method also works fine with this page load timeout implicit weight. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to check because since you mentioned... Hello. Yeah, uh, because whenever I learn now, uh, so that time I see it's a navigate2 method, uh, not where entire page is loaded. Yeah, 
No, but as okay. you see now, you know it, it works fine with Navigate dot two method also, right? Same yeah. like what we did for uh, driver. Oh, for the welcome, brother. Okay. So with this implicit weight, you know we have covered. Let's move on to the uh, other weight method, which is the explicit weight. Okay, and then in explicit weight, there are uh, you know two commands: web driver weight. and uh, fluent weight so as i told you you know there is a difference between implicit weight and uh, explicit weight the difference being that of condition okay so implicit weight you know as you have seen there is no condition as such you know like whether that particular element should be visible or whatever right so it is just simply giving you a wait time for a browser and a, a wait time for identifying an element okay so now we will see what is the difference or how do we use explicit weight in this particular scenario okay so here what we will do is first we will see what is web driver weight using this explicit weight concept okay so for this explicit weight web driver weight right so now here what you need to do is we need to create or uh, i would say an object or, or a, a variable boolean i will give you this example uh, wherein uh, let's take an example of uh, in this case uh, same stuff okay I'll, i'll probably take this example where you want selenium to wait until this particular object is uh, probably clickable or you know whatever i'll show you different methods here or different conditions here so uh, element to be clickable okay this is one condition meaning selenium will wait for a certain amount of time whatever you have mentioned until this particular object is clickable sometimes what happens is that browser i mean the loads and the objects are yet to be loaded you know uh, so in that case the click operation may not work although you know the browser has been loaded completely but there are certain elements on that particular page that loads a little later right so in that case if you use that click method directly you know it will give you an error saying that element not clickable or you know whatever so in that case you have this explicit uh wait method by which you can give a condition that that particular element when it becomes clickable for you know this particular duration of time only then you can click on it or else you wait for that duration to get completed Okay, so now we will see that same thing with an example, so that it is more clear to you. Okay, so here let's say I would say I will use a boolean uh, variable, and I will tell you why. So it says new web driver weight. Okay, so this you have to create an object of web driver weight, and you will say driver. okay so you have to mention the instance of the web driver that you have created so on the top we have created this instance right driver so i have to mention here as driver comma you have to mention the duration of wait you want okay so i would say here as let's say 10 seconds okay and what you will do next is you will say dot until okay uh, before that let me control shift o okay dot until here you will say expected conditions so as you remember you know explicit wait is a wait with a condition right so expected conditions Dot, and here you will find a list of methods 
which are nothing but conditions which you want to use for interacting with that object so let's say you say element to be clickable okay or element to be selected if it is a drop down or you know element selection state to be or el el a dom property to be or whatever i mean there are a list of methods that you can play around with okay so probably i will make use of element to be clickable and i would say by dot uh, xpath okay and i will copy this xpath here right Okay, sorry. I have to create a web element because this method returns a web element. So, yeah, just to again explain this expected condition. What is the condition that I've used? I've used element to be clickable, right? And if you see here. what does it return the return type is a web element right so obviously i have to create a web element uh to store that value right so i've used this web element i will say link click and then i would say link click dot click okay so now what i'm doing here i let me explain this code so i have used this web driver wait class i have i have given this uh, driver instance over here i have mentioned what is the duration of seconds i want this particular uh, selenium to wait so i have mentioned it as 10 seconds and until what until this expected condition is satisfied so what is that expected condition that the element which i am passing over here has to be clickable okay so if it is clickable and if it is uh, clickable within 10 seconds let's say at 4 sec fourth second you know it is clickable then it will wait for 4 seconds it will move ahead and it will you know click on that particular object but let's say for whatever reason that object which you have mentioned here is not clickable even after 10 seconds then you know then after this particular line it will give you an error saying that element not clickable or know whatever um, valid error it has to exception it has throw it has to throw it will throw that okay so let us see this how it works uh, we'll launch this particular url and let's see so it has launched the browser and it has obviously clicked on it right because within 10 seconds it was able to find that object and that object was also clickable so that is why it clicked on it now if i have to show you the other way around uh maybe we can use some other methods to see you know what all possible things we can do using this expected condition so i would say dot uh probably we can use yeah invisible is also a good method so invisibility of okay so invisibility of and the return type is boolean right yeah actually i was planning to use this example first but anyways so this returns a boolean value and what it is going to do is it is going to wait for 10 seconds for this particular object to become invisible you're getting my point so let's say there is certain uh, you know object that comes up on the screen right for uh, let's say 5 seconds or 10 seconds okay and after that 
it automatically vanishes from the screen and then you want to perform certain operation uh, on that particular application okay so in that case this particular uh, method would work for you okay so it says invisibility off cast argument one two three Why is it giving an error? Dot invisibility of by dot export. Last argument we want to get element. Why is it giving an error? Hmm. My God, it's cost. Why this is giving an error? Actually, this particular method should work. Basically, the same cast argument one to get element. Let me try the other way. dot invisibility of that element obj find okay so anyways uh, what i have basically done is instead of mentioning driver dot find element over here i have created a web element separately and then i have passed this web element in this particular uh, parameter so again just to brief you what i am doing there is this another method in expected conditions so there is a list of expected condition as i have told you we have seen one for element to be clickable right and now what we are seeing is invisibility of a particular element so i want to know whether this particular object okay by online gets invisible within 10 seconds or not obviously this time it will not get invisible because that is not supposed to but just imagine there is an application where there is an uh, probably an object that is overlapping your main screen for few seconds you know initially when you launch the browser okay and for that initial time you want your selenium script to wait so that once it vanishes once it becomes invisible then it should perform the execution on the actual page of that application okay so for handling such scenarios there is this expected conditions method called as invisibility of where you can give that element web element over here you can mention what the time it should wait for that object to become invisible and then once that is done then you can mention whatever driver dot find element whatever object you want to you know click or do any operation on that particular browser or that application okay if this particular 
invisibility doesn't work within this time limit which obviously it will not happen here on this page then it will give you an exception and the execution will come to a halt okay so now we will see that the negative scenario where i am executing this it will launch this lic website and it is waiting for 10 seconds for this buy online web element to become invisible so you see it has still not thrown any error and after 10 seconds the execution has completed and it has thrown a timeout exception saying that waiting for invisibility of you know whatever object that we have mentioned tried for 10 seconds with 500 milliseconds interval okay so for 10 seconds maximum it waited and for every half second it was validating whether that object has become invisible or not okay so it it actually uh checked 20 times within this 10 seconds period whether that object has become invisible or not and once that 10 second time was breached it gave you an error saying that timeout exception this invisibility method did not work as expected okay uh, any question guys so far uh madhuri rajesh jhansi whoever has any question no no we are good okay so you under you are you are able to understand right why do we or in which scenario you would be able to use these methods right the first one i told you was uh, element to be clickable okay what was that method name i forgot uh, yeah element to be clickable so there are certain uh, uh, web pages where the page might load come you know you know you you may not see that your know, page is loading but there are certain uh, you know uh, objects on that web browser that may load a little later even after the page has loaded okay i believe uh, using this ajax uh, concept yeah, ajax loader yeah, exactly a, yeah ajax loader you know it it loads separately also you know although the page has loaded completely the ajax objects sometime takes a little while even after the web page has loaded okay so in that case you may uh, encounter an error if you just give page load timeout you know seconds and if you say click on that ajax object but that ajax object is yet not clickable okay it might be in disabled state and it is not able to click on it so to handle such scenarios you can use that element to be clickable method you give certain time over there it will wait for that object state to become clickable and then it will click on it okay so that is one way of using this explicit wait uh, web driver wait method the other method or the other condition is what we have seen of invisibility of right so any uh, overlapping window or overlapping you know those uh, objects that come up and vanishes within let's say 5 seconds or whatever and then you would be able to interact with the actual uh, web elements so in that case you can make use of this invisibility of uh, condition and handle such scenarios okay so there are plenty of them i mean uh, you know i will not be able to show you all of them but you know you can you know practice at home you know all of these things you know there are plenty of them so number of elements to be so if you want certain elements to you know be of certain number and then you want to perform certain next operation you know you have those methods and the, the list is pretty big okay i mean text to be present and then title should be something url should be something or visible uh, just like how we have invisibility of we have visibility of web element also okay so again that example of uh, ajax can be used over here if that ajax uh, object or web element is not yet loaded you can make use of visibility of so until that particular object is visible it will wait for that amount of time and then it will perform the next operation okay so this was about explicit wait using web driver wait then we have also something called as fluent wait which is again one command of explicit wait it is similar to uh web driver wait but 
you know you can mention how many times selenium should check whether that particular uh, object is visible for you know whatever period of time that you have mentioned so you get a flexibility of making selenium you know constantly check whether that condition is satisfied or not and then perform the next operation okay so we will see th that also so the way to write that fluent weight is something like this weight weight web driver okay you can give any name object name for this like as mentioned as weight okay equal to new fluent weight you have to again mention web driver over here right and then the instance of the web driver that you have created so here in this case it is driver okay dot before that let me import fluent weight uh, by using control shift oops and then dot okay with time out okay so now this is something in the syntax okay probably you have to remember this so there is something that you have to follow as is okay so there is no other way to write fluent weight kind of a statement Okay, this might sound or that this might look a little complicated, but over a period of uh, time, you would get hang of it. You know what is the syntax for using uh, fluent weight? Okay, so with timeout, you can mention duration dot of second. You can say whatever five seconds or maybe ten seconds. And then next is polling every. Okay, this is the variation from the normal uh, web driver weight. So here, what you would mention is that you have to check whether that condition is met. Sorry, every two seconds. Okay, so. You have to wait for ten seconds, but every two seconds you have to wait, uh, validate whether that condition that I am searching is achieved or not. Okay, and then during this ten seconds, you can ignore an exception. What exception? No such element exception. Dot plus. Okay, pretty lengthy <laughs> piece of code, right? But uh, let me just copy paste it in a notepad to show you. Okay, so what I've done is I've written wait uh, web driver wait again. This can be anything. You know, it is just a name of an object. I've created new fluent wait instance. Uh, I have given the driver instance what I have created. So driver was something that I've mentioned over here right uh, at the top so this is the instance what i've created so i've mentioned that over here then dot with timeout okay this is again a method where you have to mention the timeout what you want to give so i've given duration dot of seconds 10 dot polling every meaning how many after how many seconds you want selenium to validate whether that condition is satisfied so in this case i have mentioned as 2 seconds and during this period of 10 seconds selenium should ignore no such element exception dot plus so any uh, exception which matches this no such element during this 10 minutes uh, period it should ignore okay and one thing you have to remember here is uh, by default it takes java dot util dot no such element exception but actually the one which you want here is related to org dot open queue dot uh, selenium okay dot no 
such element exception. So not this one. Yeah. So this is one important thing that you have to remember because the moment you enter your no such element exception dot class, by default Selenium imports this package, import Java dot util. But for our fluent weight, we need a package which is under this folder org dot dot Selenium. Okay. So make you can make a note of this, okay? Because with this, the fluent weight will not work. Okay. So further, once you have set this particular time and the interval, it should you know validate. Okay. So then what you have to do is you have to write certain again piece of code which goes something like this. Web element. You can give any object web element object name here equals to wait dot until okay and you have to mention new function over here web driver okay comma web element so these are the two parameters it accepts and again this is a syntax which uh, you know you will be able to remember eventually uh, control shift pro okay, anyways let's see further change type to function functions with driver oh, I'm sorry bracket okay so here you have to use this yeah this one add unimplemented methods okay yeah so again so this is similar to an interface right so once you create an in, you know, once you use an interface, you have to also Im implement this method that is there uh, within that interface. So there is this method called as public web element apply. Okay, and here you have to mention the web driver instance which you have created. In this case, it is driver. Okay, and here you will say which object you want to identify. Okay, so I will say driver dot find element by dot x path okay and I will I will give the same x path of this object okay and what I'll do is So yeah, I think that should be it. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> so what I've done is here I am finding an object. Okay, which is this buy online. It will, you know, Selenium will wait for ten seconds for this object to come up, and it will keep on validating every two seconds whether this object has actually uh, is exist or not okay if it breaches 10 seconds then it will give you a no such element exception error but within that 10 seconds you know we are ignoring this no such element exception error okay and let's say within this 10 seconds if it is able to find this object well, then it will you know continue with whatever uh, code that you have written to perform this object okay so let me just say sys out fluent wait complete okay so let me run this first and then we will see whether it is working fine
so obviously now this LIC website gets launched uh, it will wait for 10 seconds for this object and within that 10 seconds it should work fine right so this should not throw any error We have not mentioned it to click, right? So it didn't click, but at least we will see whether we got this message or not, right? So it says fluent weight completed. So no errors, it, it has successfully printed this fluent weight completed. You know, instead of this, I could have mentioned driver.findElement.click, right? So anything should be fine. But now let's say I intentionally add some wrong XPath, okay? So I have added this character. And now let us see what happens. So for after, obviously this object will not be visible uh, even after this 10 seconds, right? So let us see whether this uh, fluent weight will validate this object every two seconds or not. Okay, so I I'm, I want to show this, you know, how this fluent weight works. Okay. So the positive scenario, it is working fine. So no problem with it. The negative scenario, I wanted to see whether it works as expected or not. So, if you see here, it is waiting for 10 seconds. Every two seconds, ideally, it should check whether this X path is available or not. And after 10 seconds, obviously, it has thrown an error. No such element exception, right? So, unable to locate element so and so by online two. Right, uh, uh, let us see, yeah. yeah, so tried for 10 seconds with 2000 milliseconds interval, correct? So that is what we wanted Selenium to do, right? So it waited for 10 seconds with an interval of 2 seconds. So for every 2 seconds it was checking whether this object which I have given here uh, is available, available or not. If it is not available for the first two seconds, again on the fourth second it will validate whether it is available. Again on the sixth second, again on eighth, and then again on tenth. So after tenth second, if it is still not available, then it will give you an error like what I just showed you here, saying that no such element exception, and it will mention that it has tried for ten seconds with two thousand milliseconds, which means two seconds interval and yet it was not able to find that object and it has given you a timeout exception error and then no such element exception so the timeout also has breached and then the object obviously it was not there so you also got a no such element exception uh, any question guys on this i know fluent weight can be a little tricky because of the syntax but at least the concept should be you know pretty easy to understand and rest of the exceptions are oh, sorry the weight explicit weight implicit weight the syntax is also pretty straightforward right so that that should be fine a fluent weight to be very honest even i am not using it that frequently so even for me it took a while for you know kind of remembering the syntax but yeah that is something that you have to learn over a period of time so any questions uh, anyone sanjay madhuri rajesh or rahul but uh, even though instead of the fluent weight we can mostly cover in the explicit weight right if you want to uh, uh, validate the particular exact condition like uh, using assertion mm -hmm. so most of the times in the explicit weight we can cover so explicit weight uh, you mean the web driver weight you're saying yeah yeah so web driver weight also will work the same way the only difference here is that you are also giving in a specific condition to revalidate after whatever duration you want to okay here you know it doesn't work that way i believe uh, by default it validates every uh, half second i think we saw that message uh, earlier also wherein it sa said that retried uh, every uh, I yes, yes, five, every, half yeah, yeah, every half second. Yeah. Five milliseconds. Yeah, yeah. 
I think uh, not five milliseconds. Uh, it was five thousand milliseconds. Five hundred. Five hundred milliseconds. Five hundred. Five hundred. Yes, yes. Right. But then, if you want to change that, you know, instead of five hundred milliseconds, if you wanted to validate, let's say, two seconds or whatever, then you know, this fluent weight would give you that mo- more flexibility. Okay, but obviously, ex- explicit weight with web driver weight also works fine. Okay, so it's not not that if you don't use fluent weight, then you know you would not be able to you know use this weight concept. This particular web driver weight works perfectly fine, and also this implicit weight also should work fine. The only difference here is that you know you are weighting without any condition, whereas over here you are uh, you know. using these conditions you know, what it should do what it should wait for you know expected conditions over here like that okay so we are done with uh, the weight robo class i think i will cover tomorrow because it's already 920 and uh, tomorrow along with robo class i will quickly cover um, selectors which actually i have anyways unintentionally covered because we were writing so many code anyways but tomorrow i will specifically show you xpath different types of xpath css then uh, other selectors like id uh, name uh, i think class name then there is link text partial link text right and xpath uh, you know what are the different like sibling um uh, and uh, preceding there are many things in xpath also so we will see that tomorrow along with robo class and if time permits uh, i would start with test ng so i'm a little excited of for test ng also so if if time permits we will cover that so tomorrow most probably we will connect at uh, 11 o'clock 11 to 12:30 i'm planning to take this because evening yeah. i'm not available yeah so we will see that tomorrow okay so thank you so much guys if you don't have any question i think we can end but if you have any question i can take probably one or two thank you rahul thanks so much yeah we are good yeah thank you rahul yeah thank you thank you so much thank you rahul